So without further ado, I'm going to introduce today's speaker. Um, so the topic today, what's new at the, at the fair? Um, we're going to hear from Chris Pickering. He's our assistant manager at the Northwest Washington Fair and Event Center. And he's going to be talking about the new Farming for Life experience. It's a permanent exhibition and learning space <clears throat> to be housed in the new Farm Pavilion building at the fairgrounds in Linden. Um, if you haven't seen the building itself, it's gorgeous. I can't wait to see when the exhibit is completed. Um, we'll guide visitors in farming developments, showcase the rich history. We'll also have a partnership with WSU, our Washington State University, the satellite office, a food lab, a teaching kitchen, and exciting new exhibits to have at the Northwest Washington Field on a rotating basis. So I'm uh, thrilled to introduce Chris Pickering. And Chris, if you want to take it from here, you can start your presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Annika. And a special thank you to the entire Conservation District for pulling this together. Um, it shows a tremendous amount of adaptability to be able to have our fifth uh, Small Farm Expo in this new format. So thank you for that. Uh, so yes, Chris Pickering, uh, I am the next manager of the Northwest Washington Fair. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Jim Barron, who has been the manager for 17 years, is looking to retire, excitedly looking to retire, and uh, that will happen after this year's fair. So we are still having our fair, August 17th through 22nd, 2020. We're certainly planning to have it, and it's going to be fantastic. And one of the questions that we get most often is, what's new at the fair? And of course, today we're going to be talking about the farm pavilion and the farming for life experience. But, you know, we could just as easily be talking about our new all day country music festival on Saturday affair, or that we're going to have a stunt dog show, or even that we're going to have wild animals. So you can take your picture next to a sloth. Uh, there's always something new at the fair, always something exciting. And we're really looking forward to our 2020 fair when we're finally able to go outside again and be with friends and family. So the Farming for Life experience, if you uh, are familiar with the fair, you might say, well, we already have a Farming for Life experience. It's in the tent outside of the Henry Jansen barn. And you'd be right. Uh, but that was just the beginning of the idea of what we really wanted to do. Part of our mission as the fair is to provide agricultural education. Oh, Chris, Chris, I'm going to stop you for a second. Do you, are you, gonna, do you want to share your screen right now? We only see you. Just seeing me is fine right now. Oh, okay, great. Screen moment <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, so, yes, so uh, right now, our, our mission was education regarding agriculture, past, present, and future. And right now, with the current Farming for Life experience, we've been doing that six days out of the year. And we wanted to expand that to a year-round offering so we can be reaching students and visitors throughout the year and providing an even greater level of education. So with that concept in mind, a few years back, we had a uh, member of our board, foundation board, uh, reach out to a contact in New York, Mr. David Lackey, who I see is on the chat with us today. Say hi, David. <laughs> um, so we're excited to have him along. David has a prolific background in exhibit design. He is wildly creative. Uh, he's worked with Disney at their Epcot Center to design exhibits, and we were really lucky to be able to connect with him and have him on board. Uh, and so he's put together an incredible exhibit for us. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over now to my screen share. We're just a couple seconds off from that. <laughs> and I'm going to share with you a video that uh, really shows how far we've come and how quickly we've come on this exhibit. So. For those of you who are familiar with the fairgrounds over the past few years, you'll notice that three of our old buildings are missing and we have one new really nice building. And so this was the progress of that journey. And so these are the old barns that you can see we took down and in their place built up a new structure. Now what's really impressive is we did the demolition in the winter of 2018 and then last year we uh, started in January on the construction. Now, if you can think back to last February, you remember we had that massive snowstorm and we lost an entire month of construction time. So you can see what it looks like in January there. And then not much happens between February and March. <laughs> but then it goes up very quickly. 
and we were able to have our occupancy permit for the new farm pavilion by July. And so if you attended last year's fair, there's a good chance that you walked through the new farm pavilion building and it had uh, the 4-H arts, the quilts, and the horticulture in it, as well as our corporate parties and a small exhibit, which hopefully you got to experience, which showed uh, what was ahead and had a nice diagram, uh, a diorama of the new exhibit that's coming to be. So the first step of this project was to build this new $5 million building to house all of these things. And the next part was to complete our million dollar plus exhibit that's going to go inside it and be year round. So none of this would have been possible without you without the local community who sees this project and feels the passion for it and is motivated to make it happen. All of this has been funded through local donations and state grant funding, and we couldn't have done it without you. So you'll see at the end of the video here, it has a little thank you uh, because it was over 50 uh, local individuals and organizations that helped bring this project to life. And we're still looking to get there. So far, we've raised over four and a half million dollars and uh, as you can tell, we need six million to complete the project. Now we've already completed the Farm Pavilion building and we've also uh, secured the building permits from the city of Linden to go forward with the exhibit. We were hoping to have the entire exhibit ready by fair time, but unfortunately due to the current circumstances we're in, we're not able to proceed with construction at this time. So whenever this lifts is how much of it we'll have done by fair time. Hopefully we'll have at least the, uh, orientation theater. So if you go to our website, once you're done scrolling through all of our great headline acts, you'll see that we have uh, the Farming for Life experience, experience farming like never before. And when you go to this page, it's going to have an actual outline and actually has a donation button section as well, but of what the, the exhibit is going to look like. So I'm just going to walk you through each of the different areas and show you uh, what's in store. And then at the end of this presentation, I'm going to add a video link in the chat. Uh, David Lackey has put together a phenomenal video. It's four minutes long. Uh, it really carries the emotion and power of what we're doing here. Uh, it's very much like a Planet Earth style video. Uh, so here you're looking at the Farming for Life experience, and this will be on the ground level of the new farm pavilion. We will have fair offices on the second level above it. Uh, you can see there's a reception desk and then there's the orientation theater off to the side and not pictured uh, right where that shadow gentleman is over here. There's, this is actually going to be windows that look into that WSU research lab that Annika was referencing. So we have a lease agreement with WSU and they're going to create an actual uh, laboratory facility and have full-time staff there. So I remember when I was growing up as a kid, going to the La Brea tar pits and looking through the window at paleontologists working on fossils. And for me, that was the most awesome thing that could be. And so this will really give an opportunity for students to look in on people with careers in agriculture and actually working on it and see the science and technology behind it and that it's a real possibility for them to go into as well. Uh, if you look towards the top, we have the journey of food in the top left corner there. And then we'll move down to the berries, dairy, and seed potatoes. And then we have life cycles of agriculture. You can't see on this wall quite yet, but on the back side, there's a great interactive innovations arcade. And then we have our uh, interactive projection table over here. And we'll go through each of these individually. So the lobby and reception uh, is a, a really nice area where we will be receiving everyone. And as you can see on the right hand side is going to have a very beautiful recognition for all of our major donors. And this is something that David is designing right now. There's still time if you want to be a major donor that you can get onto this wall, but uh, it's gonna be a really nice piece at the end. The orientation theater uh, is going to really set the tone for the exhibit and it's going to explain uh, the history of agriculture throughout uh, Whatcom and Skagit counties. And you'll notice the barnwood uh, decor in the background, and that is actually harvested from a uh, recent uh, farm in uh, Whatcom County. And that was actually just done this past summer. So we got fresh barnwood, it's real barnwood. Um, it's gonna have that real feel and we're very fortunate to have that. The Wonder Wall of History is gonna be in the next room. And this is a really unique piece because it showcases the history of our region. 
uh, as David was going around and interviewing different farmers, we came across uh, different artifacts and photographs and stories that really tell the history of uh, our area and how it related to agriculture and how that's been so important for our communities. And so whether it's a, a, an old milking jug or an old plow, uh, there, there are some great artifacts that'll be in there and it'll be uh, truly representative of our area. The journey of food is for me, uh, one of the most exciting pieces of this exhibit because uh, it really takes farm to fork to a whole new level. And it shows all the steps that really happen in between there. So whether it's the growing of the crop, the harvesting of the crop, packaging, shipping, uh, the whole nine yards, all the way. And so you can see there's a lot of interactive elements here, whether it's uh, panels or cards. And that's what we really were gearing this whole exhibit towards is something that kids can put their hands on and not just have a passive experience. So you'll see a lot of interactive elements over the next few slides. And uh, this is really a great way for them to, to get involved with agriculture and have it become real in their life. And it'll be fun for adults too. Uh, the Innovations Arcade is going to be uh, lift up panels. So you'll learn about uh, new technologies in uh, the agricultural industry. And you can see the Innovation Arcade there as well will be a touch screen providing information. So this is the berry area, and you can see there are blueberry, strawberry, and raspberry crates. And when you pull those crates open, they're actually going to be uh, tall books that show um, information about the different uh, berry farmers in our region. And of course, there's a video display that will also go into that and a conveyor belt with the berries underneath. And if you look to the right there, there is a little alcove and this is where you get to experience what it's like to be on a berry harvester. And that floor underneath you will actually vibrate the same vibration that uh, the berry harvesters use for raspberries and blueberries. And then you watch a video about that and feel like you're going through the field. So that will be really cool too. The centerpiece of the exhibit is the dairy barn. You know, we have a barn within our farm pavilion barn. Uh, and the video behind the cow there is going to explain how local farmers uh, work and take a look inside their dairies. And uh, you can see there's a sign about robotic milking and innovations in uh, food and that we provide to the cows. Um, the cow was also going to illustrate its digestive system and how that works, which is particularly important given uh, the current discussion around cows and methane. And then seed potatoes is a uh, really an interesting piece as well. You can see we have the crates there. And then um, if you've ever been to the Bedlington farm, they have the conveyor belt that sorts out the potatoes by size, by spacing the rollers different uh, sizes apart. So it's really interesting. And then um, we have another alcove. This one does not vibrate. <laughs> this one you just stand on and it immerses you in a, kind of an infinity experience of being out in the potato fields and as well as having farmers talk about their experiences. The careers in agriculture is a unique thing because it's not just having you read about it, you get to spin a wheel. And then the wheel will tell you what your new career would be. And then it'll refer you over to the informational panels on the left that will talk about what your salary would be, uh, what the job requirements are, uh, how many hours a day you need to work, and what are challenges that that particular position is facing. Uh, in the industry right now. Uh, so again, taking those students out of their right now and putting them into, I could do this as a career. And then the agriculture wall behind it is a sort of wall of fame for our local farmers. And so we'll have a plethora of local farmers uh, on display as well as biographical information uh, and uh, just a, a really great tribute to those who um, devote every day of their lives to this passion. Uh, the farming cycles of life, you can see water, soil, food. Um, again, interactive, it's great that uh, people are gonna be able to be really hands-on with all of these. And then the last piece we're gonna look at is the tabletop projection. And the tabletop projection is going to be uh, an interactive dining experience where you'll hear from the farmer about the piece of food that's on your plate, and then you'll hear from a chef of how they prepared it and it'll all come to life uh, on the table. 
and then it'll be wiped clean and the next group will be able to come and watch it. So I'm gonna go back to this one here so you can kind of see how the walkthrough works um, since now you've seen each of the individual areas. And you can see where you progress from the entrance lobby to the orientation theater to the milestones in agriculture and you can see that little window of lab into the lab there. Um, and then the journey of food on the bottom right the farmers in Northwest Washington, the table, and the berries, dairy, and potato. And then we'll have a changing exhibit in the corridor if you exit out to the left and go back up to the lo main lobby there. Uh, currently, we have slated to do the history of the Northwest Washington Fair, we have some old ribbons or old photos from concerts where they packed out the grandstands and even had people on the dirt, which we're looking to do again this year with our new party in the dirt. So uh, that'll be a, a nice tribute to the fairs element and the fairs uh, tie into agriculture. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my share now because we've reached everything that I was going to be talking about with that. And again, just wanted to bring up that uh, we are about a million dollars shy of uh, finishing up our project. And we are looking forward to uh, completing it. We are moving forward. Uh, we have taken out loans to do so. Um, we want this project done. We want to get people in it as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, as soon as we're all freed up from this virus, we'll be able to do that. Uh, so if you do feel uh, encouraged to provide donations or know someone who would, you can go directly through our website or you can contact the fair office. Uh, as promised, I'm going to include that video link into our chat. And this video is really fantastic. I, I recommend you take the four minutes to watch it. Uh, once we're done here, and that is uploaded. And thank you all for coming to the Small Farm Expo today. Uh, again, it's great we can have it in this format, and we'll see you at the fair August 17th through 22nd. I'll kick it back to Annika. Okay. Thank you, Chris. And I'm just going to bring us back to to dun, 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 our website. And this is the time that I would love to hear from all of you. I'm gonna go to our chat box. Um, and Chris just shared with you in that space, um, I, the YouTube link for that video. And you know, Wacom Conservation District is, is dedicated to bringing educational opportunities to Wacom you know, Northwest. So we're so thrilled, Chris, too, um, can, can enjoy it, as well as engage our, the students that we work with in that space um, as well. So I had a question about, you know, we've got a lot of parents at home right now teaching their students, um, homeschooling their students, and thinking about how classrooms and, and kids of, of different ages might interact with this. What are the, what are the plans for bringing in school-aged children to this exhibit? I mean, that's going to be the bread and butter of the exhibit is to have the local school children. We have Frances Negranza on our team and she is uh, responsible for the farm pavilion at this point and all of our facility rentals. And she's run uh, an excellent research on all of the different students in the area and how we can reach them and just how many we can impact. And I apologize, I don't have that number in front of me, but it, it's quite a few students just in our local community. Uh, that will be able to come and see this. Again, this exhibit will be year round, so we can do tours during the school year. Uh, it doesn't have to be during the summer or during fair time, but then of course we will be uh, open to the public during fair time as well. Great, awesome. Okay, so I'm looking at the chat box here. We've got some questions coming in. And thank you again, Chris. Um, it's so fun to see how that has changed and adapted. Um, we really need something in Western Washington to, to celebrate the agricultural community here. So it's gonna be perfect. Um, so question we have, will these exhibits change and be updated over time as our region's agriculture changes over time? That's a great question. How, how adaptable is this exhibit? Absolutely, and it's designed to be plug and play. So we can totally take an exhibit out and put a new exhibit in its place. 
Uh, we're anticipating that that'll probably be on a five-year rotation for the major exhibits. But as I mentioned with the wall on the west side of the building, it's going to be changing probably more frequently than that. So uh, we do have opportunities with space. Uh, you saw the building is much larger than what the exhibit itself is. In addition to having WSU on the east wing, the west wing is going to be home to a food lab that will again will be open to the public. There will also be public meeting spaces available. So just south of the exhibit, there's a, a large area where we can bring in a berry harvester. Uh, we have that capability and we can do rotating exhibits through there as well. Great. Um, it, it seems as though there must have been um, a tremendous amount of support from our local agricultural community. How um, were local farmers engaged in the development of these exhibits? So right from the very start, there's been a, uh, a local committee uh, of uh, individuals that have been interested in the project and they were consulted. In fact, Francis was on those committees at the very beginning. Um, and then David Lackey has made several trips over to our side of the world and has been visiting and touring around with farmers uh, intensively and getting to hear their stories, recording their stories, visiting the farms, um, hearing what's important to them. And then uh, in the final stages, we, we also are going to bring in uh, another community team to look at the details of the proposed exhibits and make sure that all of the content is there that we need to have represented. Excellent. Awesome. Um, so looking for any more questions from our audience. I think you, you just, you know, knocked their socks off. They didn't know. <laughs> what well, one thing I, I would like to add is that uh, with the Farm Pavilion, we're not just looking to have the exhibit B for our local school children. We really want this to become a tourist destination. The agritourism has become a thing. And so mm -hmm. this can become a hub for farm tours. We're kicking around the idea of doing a, an agricultural film festival. Uh, there's different things that we can do in this build, new building and use it as a hub to do more, to draw more attention to Northwest Washington and just how much we do contribute to you know, dairy production in the nation and uh, all of our other agriculture as well. I, yeah, definitely agree. It's, uh, it could has so much possibility. And as an educator, I'm just thrilled to have this as uh, an opportunity in Western Washington. Um, well, thank you so much, Chris. And if anyone else has um, anything else that they'd like to ask um, or bring up, please let us know. I'm pulling up the speaker schedule for the remainder of the Small Farm Expo. We have um, presentations on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. So I hope that you are tuned into those um, and you'll be able to view the Zoom meeting link the day of the event, so catch it there. It will always be on our Facebook Live, um, on the event page, as well as our main page on Facebook. And again, I just wanna give a big thanks to Chris Pickering for uh, meeting with us today, and we hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you, Annika. All right, thanks for joining us on Zoom conference today, and we will uh, see you next week for the remainder of our Small Farm Expo.